Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful session of TNT. It's a special session because this is a special time. And what we want to do tonight is to be able to help you to navigate through the challenges that many of you are experiencing during this international crisis that we're involved in today. I'm happy tonight to have with me two distinguished uh, facilitators to help uh, us to grow through this season. And these personalities, I'm sure you already know, but we have uh, Dr. Audrey Chapman. I think everybody knows Dr. Audrey Chapman. She is a noted author and psychologist who has distinguished herself internationally and has been and continues to be uh, sought after for her gifts and skills in this area. We also have uh, Dr. Kenneth Ballard, who we know is uh, the champion and the leader of our Family Life Ministries at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. And uh, he is a licensed therapist and he has uh, certainly been involved perhaps with many of you in your personal lives. Uh, you've seen him on television um, and he's very engaging and involved with helping people to grow through seasons like this. And so I want to welcome the both of you tonight uh, as we share together on this special episode of Thursday Night Teaching. Thank you both for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, as we begin tonight, we all know about this coronavirus thing, but I'm not sure we all know how to handle the uncertainties that accompany this virus and this strange time. And so help us tonight to uh, understand how we can navigate the uncertainties. Dr. Chapman, you wanna start? You want me to start? Yes. Uh, well, I certainly think that, um, you know, I've had a lot of thoughts over the last, uh, couple of weeks, particularly since they have mandated that people do stay home. Um, and one of the things that I think that certainly bombards all of us and leaves us feeling a bit anxious is the uncertainty about all of this. You know, that, that, that we don't know how this is going to all turn out. The other thing that's troubling people, of course, is the confinement. Yes. And the third thing is the economic part, uh, you know, like, will, will all jobs be there? And uh, what will those changes be about when this, when this ends? But to get down to practical matters, people have been concerned about food, food supply, their children, their education. Uh, a lot of people are now homeschooling, but some children don't have that as a, a benefit. They don't have computers. So we have a lot of multiple issues going on since the pandemic uh, episode of the virus. And I think the first thing always is, uh, that's important is your own mental health. How are you taking care of your mental health? How are you dealing with the anxiety and maybe the depression that set in? Uh, I've been working with people uh, via video conferencing this last couple of weeks and They've talked about feeling blah and feeling empty and feeling cut off from human contact. And I think we, we didn't realize before this how important human contact, personal attachments, relationships with family and friends and how important it is. So I think the first thing is to really not only acknowledge what you're going through, I think that's important, but also to look at what kinds of ways you're going about dealing with the stress of it. Uh, stress brought on by wearing and 
and having anxiety. Um, and I don't want to go too far into it. I know you have other questions, but there are many exercises that people can do. And there's diet, there's so many, there's technology, there's so many things that you can begin to consider to help you to cope with the confinement and the anxiety. I guess uh, just before uh, I turn the mic over to uh, Dr. Ken, I guess what you said in a nutshell is what you've been saying for, I guess, 25, 30 years. The question that you always raise, and that question is, how's your relationship with yourself? Absolutely. And so um, I think that you have brought some great points uh, to the forefront. So, Dr. Ken, why don't you uh, yeah, chime and, in on this? In addition to what Dr. Chapman has, has stated, is you have to look at, when you look at uncertainty, look at your life. Do some reflection. There are probably a whole lot of times in your life when you didn't know how things were going to turn out. I know you're probably saying, no, nothing is like this, maybe not quite like this, but there has been times when you just didn't know when your mama was sick or your daddy was sick or you're pregnant or you're going through a divorce. When you were going through trying times, you just didn't know how it was going to turn out. Uh, you had a choice. You could allow these emotions and these thoughts to totally consume you, or you could just say to yourself, I'm going to rely on faith. Now, mental health and spirituality, they come together, they work together. So if, on these uncertain times, you are, although we're hearing certain things and we're seeing certain things and we're experiencing certain things, we have to rely on our faith. Yes. Our faith is the things uh, 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 what will get you through. So you're uncertain about certain things, but your faith can tell you that things are going to get better. It's not as bleak as it, as it looks. There's a bright side somewhere. And so it, it, when it comes to uncertainty, tap not only to your mental health, because mental health and spirituality, they go together, tap into your faith as well. Great. Um, <clears throat> I think that's, a, that's a, a critical point, because sometimes people want to divorce faith from mental health. Yes. When the truth is, um, you can't divorce the two. Um, they, they are permanently married. Yes. And so it's important. Um, even people who don't believe in God mm -hmm. have faith mm -hmm. because faith is so critical to our human existence. Um, you, you think about it. Every time you get on an airplane, mm -hmm. you exercise faith. Mm -hmm. because you don't know whether the person in the cockpit is qualified or not, but you go, you sit in your seat, you buckle up your seatbelt, you do whatever they tell you to do, and you fly on that plane, and you're operating in faith because Absolutely. you believe you're going to make it to your destination. So yeah. you cannot operate in life without a faith, and faith requires good mental health yes um lest you have faith in the wrong thing so uh mm -hmm. we, we want to do that for sure um with this in mind let me ask this question what would you uh dr chapman i'll start with you again what would you suggest to anyone who's feeling overwhelmed frustrated um experiencing anxiety or anger right about now? Well, I work with a, a lady this week like that. She's got a new baby. She's uh, still expected to work from home right now. She also has a husband who's struggling, you know, worried about his job. Uh, she's got elderly parents who don't live close enough who she's concerned about. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I said to her, what we have to do is try to control what we can control, which are usually the smaller things. So I said to her, uh, do you have any opportunity in your house to uh, exercise? And she said, no, but I can take the baby out for a walk in the neighborhood. I said, well, that's exercise. Walking is, is good. 
and that gets you out of the house for a little bit. Even if it's only 15 minutes, that's better than nothing. And then we talked about uh, what she could do to regulate when she does work. Uh, because, you know, before she worked from 9.30 to 5, and now the work comes in all different hours of the day. So I said, why don't you try to set up a routine so that you work from, let's say, 9.30 to 12, then you take a break. That might be when you fix yourself something nice and you take and take that break and take that walk with the baby. Then you come back and maybe do a little bit more work. Then maybe you and your husband can be in the kitchen and start a meal and have a conversation. Uh, then you might get on your computer and, and connect with a relative or your parents uh, or uh, do a board game with uh, some other couples that you know. Uh, I, I sort of gave her kind of a recipe like that. And she said she hadn't thought about it. And I said, you want to regulate it. You probably want to do this every day, almost at the same time. Because one of the things that's bothering people is they feel their life, life is out of sorts right now because there's no routine. Right. There's no predictability. Um, things seem to be falling in their lap, you know, without any kind of idea of uh, how to address it. And if you can regiment your life a little bit, that helps a lot. So we talked about that. And then she also mentioned, which I thought was good, she said, and we're eating healthy. We're trying not to eat junk food. I suggested to another person that they watch their caffeine intake, their sugar intake, their alcohol intake, and certain teas have a lot of alcohol in it too. So, I mean, not alcohol, I meant to say caffeine in it as well. Yes. Yes. So these are the things you have to pay attention to because those things contribute to your anxiety level. Right. Dr. Ken, you want to add to that? Yeah. I, first of all, I would like to say, if you're feeling a certain emotion, whether that's anxiety or frustration or anger, that's normal. These are Absolutely. They're normal. <laughs> So when people say, and sometimes people have difficulty with negative emotions, but if you're feeling that's normal, this is a challenging experience. So I try to help persons to understand it's normal. Name it. How do you feel? Name it. And so sometimes when you name that emotion, it kind of helps you to grab a hold of it so you're able to manage. And it may not be that you're so much overwhelmed with the emotion, with the emotion. It's just that it may be because you're holding it inside and you're sure. not you like to grab that emotion and then name it and, and, and help them to understand that it's normalized. Then I say, then help them to further understand what they can do about those emotions. There's right. something you really can do. You can name it. You, you can name it. You can uh, talk it over with a friend. And you, can, and you can limit your, you look at what is it? When do I actually feel these emotions? Do I feel it in the morning? Do I feel it in the afternoon? And more than likely, more than likely, like a lot of us, you're, you're feeling it when you're watching the news reports or you're reading papers or you're talking or you're engaging in long conversations on issues. And so if you're feeling overwhelmed with these emotions, I suggest you limit your time. Maybe, you know, and this might be hard for you, but maybe it's just one time a day that you listen to the news. Maybe right. not any conversation you're having with family and friends is about this topic. So begin to limit it and, be, and allow yourself to begin to think about some other things. You've got other things in your life, right? You've got, you got other things that are going on. There's, there's I don't know, there's, there's exercising that you could do. There's, there are family, there are shows. There, more personally, I like to deal with there, There's reading. There's reading. Reading. <laughs> You have your mind to focus on other things besides the, you're overwhelmed, not the emotion because of what's going on, because you allow yourself to be consumed with what's going on. So begin to, to limit the interactions that you have with news reports and conversations on this issue. Great. Um, now, uh, I'm glad, Dr. Chapman, you took us in the house because <laughs> that kind of brings us to the next question. Um, people are, are homebound that perhaps have never been like this before. Um, right. People have gone about their routines and they haven't been stuck in the house with the spouse and the kids right. and, and can't leave. So right. they almost feel imprisoned. They well, feel entrapped. Yes, yes. Um, 
so I, I guess this would lead to uh, disagreements and arguments uh, that may not normally take place, or <laughs> there may be normal arguments that are amplified at this particular right. time. So right. while we're in this period of quarantine, what 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 would you uh, suggest to help us to avoid uh, a bunch of arguments? Well, I certainly believe the first thing is to try to calm down. Uh, you know, I think people are more uh, intense right now than they realize. And so it doesn't take very much at all to make someone uh, feel irritated and, and short and maybe say the wrong thing. So I think you do have to pay attention to your own mindset and your body, you know, just right. to, are you tight? Are you in, you know, are you, uh, do you feel like, you know, you're about to just explode or whatever? Pay attention to that. I think uh, if somebody's irritating you, I think you, you, you can say to that person, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not in a space right now where I can even listen to this. Can, can we discuss this later? Can we discuss this later on in the evening after I've had a chance to maybe, I don't know, just take a walk or something? So you try to negotiate it if you can. Right. Um, so calming down, letting the other person know what's going on with you, that the space that you're, the mental space that you're in is important. Uh, paying attention to your body language is always important, <clears throat> and you and and using the I language, not the you language, because you suggest an accusation okay. when you start out that way. Right. And I is I'm owning my experience and what I'm going through, and I want that I want you to try to understand and join me in it. Yeah. So that all of that is important. Then you begin to tell the person what you need and don't complain, don't criticize, say what you need. Yeah. That's, that's very important. I need, I need uh, the house to be uh, less thrown together and things all over the place. I need people to pick up their clothes. I need people to wash their dishes and put them, in the dishwasher, whatever that need is, it's important to express that rather than turning it in and sulking. And then at some point it does become an explosive situation. Um, and I think, I believe in timeout. I advocate that a lot uh, to couples. If, you, if one person feels like they're getting hot under the collar, it's okay to say, you know, I think I need a break. I think I need to go downstairs. Maybe I need to get a glass of water. Maybe I need to, again, go sit out on the deck and, and cool off for a minute, but I'll be back in an hour. It's always important to say when you're going to come back. Don't just walk away right. because that will incite the other person also. Right. Um, and then um, I think then you try to sit down when you come back and hear the other person out. Just because you listen to another person and you don't agree with them doesn't mean that uh, they're right and you're wrong. When you listen to somebody, you're validating what they're saying. And validation is very important in reducing conflict. Yes. So you validate by listening and you validate by repeating back what the person has said to you. So that person hears, oh, she got it, he got it. Uh, and then you can both go into talking about how you want to resolve the problem. Great. Uh, you like to piggyback on that, Dr. Ken? Yeah, I agree with all those things. In addition, I want to say that I like to tell people to set some boundaries because now we're in the house. They're, together we're stuck. There's some things that we would do now we, we can't do anymore. Some things that we but we didn't do that we cannot, that we need to do now. So I believe in having open conversations and setting boundaries. We're talking about prevention now because you are, if you're stuck with somebody, even yourself, you you stuck yourself, you might get annoyed with yourself. So you want to set some boundaries and plan ahead. Like uh, plan. This is I went through this yesterday with a couple because uh, they were they were coming at one another. So let's schedule when your timeout's going to be. Just don't don't wait until you start getting red in the face. Let's. So uh, what do you need? The wife said I need one hour. 
So what time? Because I'm very, I like to be very clear. She says, well, if you can nine to 10 every night, then I'll give me a chance to unwind and I'll be a little bit more available. And mm -hmm. so you want to do some prevention. Make sure you take some time out for you because you got your family stress, you got the side stress, but you also have, you need some time. And what, what you do, I don't know, she, she said, I just want to curl my hair for an hour or do my makeup or whatever, but she has, she'll have an hour and guess what? He's going to have his hour as well. Mm -hmm. And then I told him that you, you want to set some time aside. I tell this to everybody for couple bonding, couple bonding. It's, I mean, if bonding, if you know what I mean, especially if you're married, bonding kind of decreases the stress. Well, I pray that you were blessed by what you heard today. And because you've heard what you heard, if you haven't made a decision for Jesus Christ, then now is the perfect opportunity. I know this is not, you know, church as usual, but salvation is business unusual. And so here's an opportunity now for you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. See, all humankind have a need for salvation. It didn't just begin, it began a very long time ago. As a result of man's sin, and sin is a problem, you know, it created an impassable gulf between us and God. Well, the wages of sin is death. And all of us spend most of our lives trying to avoid death. Think about it. All those medicines you take, you're trying to prolong the inevitable. You think about all of the exercise and eating right and all of that that we do. We're trying to avoid death. Well, the penalty for sin is death. God gave us a way back to him in Jesus Christ. He's the only remedy for our sin. And as a result of that, God receives us into his family, into his kingdom, if we would receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if you're not saved, what I'd like for you to do now is take a moment and just pray with me. Bow your heads if you don't mind. And this is a prayer I want you to pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you admitting that I am a sinner. Right now, I choose to turn away from sin and I ask you to cleanse me by your blood of all unrighteousness. I believe that you are the son of God. You're Jesus. You died on the cross to take away my sins. I also believe that you rose again from the dead so that I could be justified and made righteous through faith in him. I call upon the name of Jesus Christ to be the Savior and Lord of my life. I declare right now that I am a born again child of God. I am free from sin and full of the righteousness of God. I am saved in Jesus' name. I choose to follow you, and I ask that you fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, you're saved now, and we want to hear from you. All you got to do is give us a call, 
979-979-7411. And we'll connect you with someone so that you can carry this experience to the next step. That's right, just give us a call, 703-979-7411. Well, maybe you're not in the category of a person who's unsaved. Maybe you are saved, but you don't have a church. We invite you to make Mount Zion your church as well. Call that same number, 703-979-7411, and we'll receive you as a part of our fellowship in Jesus' name. Well, it's offering time now. And at the Mount Zion Baptist Church, we get excited about giving. Here's an opportunity for you to be able to be a blessing to our fellowship as we are a blessing to our community. All you have to do is use uh, the Easy Tide app or you can text to give. That number is being displayed right now and you can take advantage of it and be blessed as you do so. We appreciate any help you can give us. To our members, it's our responsibility to take care of our church. It's not the responsibility of the rest of the world. It's our church and it's our responsibility. <clears throat> and so don't miss the opportunity to help us to keep doing what we've been doing. Well, God bless you. And thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to next Sunday. Now, I don't know how we're going to do it next Sunday. It won't be just like this. But we're looking forward to next Sunday. This coronavirus <clears throat> is driving us into a panic. I encouraged us to do two things a couple of weeks ago. And I leave you with those. Be careful and be prayerful. That's all we can do. Be careful and be prayerful. God bless you and thank you for joining us here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. And may God continue to cover you and to keep you even in this season of crisis. God bless you.